The natural environment, undisturbed, it sustains and renews life. Human beings have the ability to impact this delicate balancing act and do so every day, sometimes in ways that disturb nature and sometimes in a way that can rejuvenate it. As a worker on the All-American Canal Lining Project, you will come in contact with habitats where sensitive plants and wildlife reside. Protecting these habitats is an important part of your job. In order for the project to succeed, every worker must follow some strict environmental rules. These rules are as important as the construction specifications and safety training provided by the contractor. The All-American Canal was authorized by the Boulder Canyon Project Act in 1928, constructed in the 1930s by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, and began delivering water in the 1940s. It conveys over three million acre feet of Colorado River water annually for use in the Imperial Irrigation District and Coachella Valley Water District service areas. It begins at Imperial Dam, located north of Yuma, Arizona, and generally parallels the U.S.-Mexico border to its terminus in the western Imperial Valley. The unlined All-American Canal is porous, and Colorado River water has seeped into the ground since its construction in the 1930s. In Public Law 100-675, Congress authorized the Secretary of the Interior, in order to reduce that seepage, to construct a new lined canal or to line the previously unlined portions of the All-American Canal from the vicinity of Pilot Knob to Drop 4, or to construct seepage recovery facilities in the vicinity of Pilot Knob to Drop 4. In April of 1994, Reclamation completed a final environmental impact statement, environmental impact report, for the AAC lining project that determined that the alternatives analyzed in the AAC final EIS EIR would serve the purpose of conserving water needed in the Southern California coastal area to offset a projected water shortage of 1.2 million acre feet that is expected by the year 2010. Design and other pre-construction activities for the AAC lining project began in early 2004. Today, you are a part of this important project. The magnitude of this job will be unique in the long history of the All-American Canal project. So far, construction and environmental experts have spent 14 years studying every foot of the right-of-way and have developed very detailed plans to protect the environment. Once the work is underway, scrutiny will be intense by a number of federal and state agencies to ensure that the project is following all of the environmental rules. Environmental staff provided by IID will be on site and available at all times. These project staff inspectors will be there to answer questions and to provide advice to construction workers and management. Monitors representing federal and state regulatory agencies may be present on the job site at any time. If environmental violations occur, they have the authority to bring work to a sudden halt and they will. So be prepared. Every individual worker will be held to a high level of personal responsibility while working on the AACL project. Those of you who do not follow the new construction practices risk one, immediate dismissal, two, personal fines of up to $100,000, and three, imprisonment for up to one year. Common sense Will take you a long way but there are some rules that you must follow one stay only in designated work areas remember you are on someone else's property and treat it with respect approved work areas access roads and staging areas will be clearly marked all project activities must remain in these areas do not go beyond or disturb areas outside of the designated work limits two do not enter exclusion areas which will be identified by sensitive resource signs, flagging, paint, and or fencing. These areas are set apart for a reason and may include sensitive animal habitats, protected plants, or 
cultural artifacts. Do not enter an exclusion zone for any reason. Three, do not litter. Dispose of trash in designated containers. All litter and construction debris must be removed from the job site daily. Four, protect all wetlands and waterways. Do not allow sediment or hazardous materials to enter any waterway or wetland area. Five, clean up and report all hazardous material leaks and spills immediately. Report all leaks and spills of hazardous materials to the environmental inspector and ensure that all contaminated materials are cleaned up, removed from the right of way, and disposed of as required by the project stormwater pollution prevention plan and spill prevention containment and control plan. Six, practice fire prevention and safety. All fires, including barbecues, are prohibited for job site safety and protection of wildlife. All vehicles and equipment on the right of way must have adequate fire tools. Seven, no pets or firearms are allowed. Pets and firearms are prohibited for job site safety and protection of wildlife. Hunting is prohibited. Eight, do not disturb artifacts, bones, or fossils. They are protected by state and federal laws. If you uncover any historic or prehistoric resources during construction, stop work at that location and contact an environmental inspector or resource specialist immediately. Nine, be aware of all applicable environmental requirements before entering the job site. It is the responsibility of each person working on the project to understand and comply with the environmental requirements that affect your job. If there is any question, ask your supervisor or an environmental inspector before starting work. 10. Attend all environmental training programs and display proof of completion of the environmental training program. Once you have completed the training, you will be given a decal that must be visible on your hard hat while working on all project sites. Any additional tailgate trainings are mandatory. For tips on fire prevention and hazardous materials, please consult your environmental handbook or ask your environmental field representative for assistance. Remember, you are responsible for understanding the environmental requirements before entering a work site, and penalties for violations include one, immediate dismissal, two, personal fines up to $100,000, and three, imprisonment for up to one year. California Department of Fish and Game is charged by the legislation of California to protect wildlife. It's up to every single one of you to make sure you employ the highest standard of environmental policy as you implement this project. We look forward to working with all of you and make sure that you follow the top 10 rules of protection as we go through this project. The All-American Canal Lining Project passes through areas containing important cultural or paleontological ancient fossil resources. These include prehistoric sites, historic sites, and sites of concern to Native Americans. These also include paleontological or fossil specimens. Fossils that may be encountered during construction include bones from large mammals, fish, invertebrates, barnacles, snails, and clams, and petrified wood. Federal law prohibits the disturbance of archaeological sites. Penalties include fines, confiscation of your personal vehicle, and or jail time. You will be held individually responsible for your actions. Known cultural paleontological resources in the project vicinity will be signed, fenced, and or marked with flagging as sensitive resource exclusion areas. Stay out of all exclusion areas. It is illegal to collect artifacts or disturb cultural resource sites. If artifacts or human remains are discovered during any construction activity, stop all work in that area and contact your construction supervisor, the environmental inspector, or the cultural resources monitor immediately.